friends, it's The Stitches, and I have a rather exciting skirt restoration project to share with you guys today. What makes this project exciting is that it's actually low-key a piece of Lolita fashion history. It was created for a wedding-themed photo shoot for Volume 5 of the English language Gothic and Lolita Bible by a manga artist named M. Alice Legro. But after it was used for the photo shoot, it kind of got passed around a little bit, and this skirt actually used to belong to a friend of mine, and they recently put it up for sale, so I just couldn't resist snapping it up. However, here's where things start to get kind of interesting. <laughs> This skirt did not come with a waistband, zipper, or any finishing. I knew ahead of time that the skirt didn't have a waistband, but I had no idea the sheer extent of the state that the skirt was in. I think it's safe to say that the skirt was um, not meant to be seen up close and also not meant to be regularly worn. But I mean, I want to wear the skirt. So let's assess the skirt's current condition and see what we need to do to make this wearable. First of all, there really is no hem. The edge is just folded up once and then top stitched. It's probably lucky that my friend only wore it once and just kind of kept it preserved since then because a raw edge like this, it can only survive the, so many trips through the washing machine. Instead of a waistband, the same treatment was given to the waist of this skirt. It's just folded over and stitched down. It's gotten kind of messy around the gathering. And this is where the zipper would be if it, um, had one, that is. And this is where I put a zipper. If I had one! Again, we've just folded over and stitched down the area where there would be a zipper. Another thing I wasn't expecting about this skirt is that the middle tier isn't actually a middle tier at all. Instead, it's been topically applied sort of like an applique, and it also um, it doesn't completely fit. All around the skirt, there are these little pleats where the applique fabric has been manipulated so that it can be stitched down. And then lastly, our final important note is this ribbon detail. I thought long and hard about the ribbon detail because I don't outright hate it, but I don't think it's right for this skirt. There does need to be some sort of detailing here where the ruffles meet the front panel, but I think I will make the executive decision to replace it with something else. Before we do any real work on the skirt, I'm just going to give it a quick steam. Honestly, this is just so that we can get more accurate before and after shots. Steaming and ironing will automatically make anything look better, and it certainly does make this skirt look almost passable, but I just feel like we can do better for this. This skirt deserves better. At least now we have a more accurate sense of the overall shape of the skirt. It's actually quite A-line. I'm going to have to disassemble most of it though, so it's definitely going to look worse before it looks better. But first, I'm a little tired of it looking like Picture Day in 1992 in here. Let's, let's change that up. Hmm. Marginally better. We'll start our alterations by picking apart the false middle tier. I've decided to turn it into an actual middle tier by cutting it to the right size and removing the backing fabric. My plan from that point is to turn the backing fabric into a waistband. Next, we'll dissect the ruffles so we can hem and regather them. The ribbon can also be removed at this point as well. Now that we have the ruffles and the middle tier pieces off of the skirt, I unpicked all the top stitching on all of the pieces and gave them a press. I also cleaned up the edges a bit and measured how wide all of my pieces were. This will help me figure out how much to cut off of the skirt. Now that I know all of my measurements, I'll open up the side seams on the front panel. I'm just seam ripping up to the line left behind by the applique, where the fabric has left a tiny bit of scarring. 
Normally scarring on fabric is a bad thing, but this actually helps give me a guideline on where to cut. But before I cut anything, I just want to double check my measurements. That way I'm sure all of my seam lines are going to end up where I want them to be. And once everything's been double checked, then we'll give it a chop. Like I said earlier, it uh, it gets worse before it gets better. This is like the opposite of a mullet dress. The portion of fabric that we cut from the skirt is then cut into two pieces. One of these pieces will become the waistband later on, and the other piece is the backing for the top ruffle. The top ruffle gathers into the middle tier, but we also need a flat layer of fabric to hang behind it for the bottom ruffle to gather into. All of my flat pieces are then measured and cut to the right size. Now that everything has been cleaned up and recut, I gathered the top ruffle to fit the ruffle facing. The ruffle is sandwiched between the facing and the middle tier of the fabric and then pinned together. This gets stitched together. And then top stitched. I don't know why I didn't hem the ruffle before stitching everything together, but eh, it'll get hemmed now. This section of the skirt is finished now, and it can be reinserted into the garment. We'll start with the long horizontal seam connecting the middle tier to the top tier of the skirt. When that's done, the side seams connecting the front panel to the rest of the skirt are stitched back up the rest of the way. Instead of the wide ribbon to cover the front panel side seams, I had this lace with ribbon beading in it in my stash that just so happened to be the exact amount I needed. There's still some glossiness, but it's a little bit more dainty. Popping it back on the dress form real quick, this is where we are so far. Our next step is to gather and reattach our bottom ruffle. But first, I need to eat and like pay bills and stuff, so here's a little commercial break. I do the gathering in sections because it makes the process a little easier and I get way more even results. The skirt and the ruffle both have eight evenly spaced pins on them. I match up the pins to each other and then gather the fabric in between them. Once everything is gathered, it gets stitched into place. Now the bottom of the skirt is totally hemmed and finished, so it's time to move on to the waistband. Returning to the fabric we cut off the skirt from earlier, I'm just using a simple pattern that I drafted to fit my waist measurement. For a little extra structure, we'll add some lightweight interfacing. We'll start with the side seams, and then attach the waistband lining to the outer fabric at the top. Once the waistband is ready to attach, we need to unpick and readjust the gathering at the top of the skirt. My old dress form had metal plates in the shoulders that my magnetic pincushion would cling to, but my new dress form doesn't, and to be honest, I'm kinda heartbroken about it. I don't want to mess with the way the skirt hangs too much, so I'm unpicking and regathering it on the form. I decided not to gather the front panel, but to make a couple pleats instead. But after looking at it, I actually changed my mind slightly and just made it one box pleat in the middle. Most of the gathering was in the back of the skirt, and I actually really like the shape that this gives it.
Once I'm done gathering and reshaping, the waistband can be pinned on and attached. Before I can finish the waistband completely, I'll install a zipper. Once the zipper is installed, I folded the waistband over and gave it a stitch in the ditch finish. And now, oh my goodness, it's finally finished. Let's do a quick little before and after. Before our final reveal, let's just remind everybody of what this skirt looked like when we first got hit. And now, the finished project. Everything looks just a tiny bit cleaner, it hangs better, you don't have to literally pin it to your body, and most importantly, it can now withstand multiple washes in the machine, meaning it can be worn in actual, real-life settings whenever we get to do that again. This was a really fun project for me, even if it did end up taking me, like, way longer than I thought it would. I know I disappeared from this channel for a little bit, I took a break, a little bit of a vacation, and now I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, so there will be plenty of more videos soon. With that, I hope everyone has a good day, and I will see you all next time. Bye!